Yesterday, an Iranian general brazenly declared, and I quote, Israel's destruction is non-negotiable. But evidently, giving Iran's murderous regime a clear path to the bomb is negotiable. This is unconscionable. The concessions offered to Iran in Luzon would ensure a bad deal that would endanger Israel, the Middle East, and the peace of the world. Now is the time for the international community to insist on a better deal. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was before the deal was announced. Uh, and uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu's uh, or government saying today that the uh, deal is out of touch with reality. The deal, as we've been talking about, calls for uh, effectively Iran to wind down uh, or suspend parts of its nuclear program that could be used for nuclear weapons development in exchange for sleeping, uh, sleeping, I wish, sweeping sanctions relief and the preliminary agreement allows all sides to continue to work towards a final deal by a June 30th deadline. Joining us now is senior fellow, American Enterprise Institute, former chair of the Pentagon's Defense Policy Board and former Assistant Secretary of Defense, Richard Pearl. Uh, Richard, um, uh, the, the, the John Boehner has blasted this. So you've had many people blast this. The president calls it a good deal. Well, of course he would. Uh, and uh, he's gone beyond that to say that this will prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. He's in no position to make that claim. And the, uh, the evidence is overwhelming that it will have no such effect because it enables Iran to keep a, an active uh, program producing material that can be converted to weapons grade, uh, maintaining facilities, including underground facilities that, by the way, were kept secret at one time but were revealed. Uh, it basically allows Iran to stay in the nuclear business. And no one under those circumstances can possibly say that this will uh, preclude their acquiring a weapon. Right. And, and, and you know, the, according to the document, uh, Iran agreed not to enrich uranium at the Fordo facility, the, the underground, for at least 15 years um, or to uh, build any new facilities. But there's no snap, from what I understand, there's no snap inspections. There are pre-planned inspections. Um, and, and, and we had a guest uh, just a, a little while ago uh, who was telling us, and that was uh, John Wallstetter, and he talked about how when the uh, Studenex virus was, uh, uh, w was put into place, um, you know, or, or hit, hit Iran, uh, what they saw on their video and their cameras led them to believe everything was normal. So if, if we're going to do inspections by those means uh, and, and uh, not unannounced inspections, we could be led to believe that everything is one way when in fact it's another way. Sure. Well, there's a reason why Iran doesn't like the idea of unannounced inspections. It's because they know that they will uh, need the freedom to cheat. And uh, with unannounced inspections, the chance of catching the cheating is, uh, is higher, although far from perfect. Uh, with announced inspections that have to be uh, uh, scheduled in advance, uh, they simply make sure they have time to hide whatever it is they, uh, they don't want us to see. We saw this year after year after year with Iraq, and they were very successful in preventing us from making uh, unannounced inspections. And in fact, David Kay, who was our uh, uh, chief inspector, right. said they were never, not once, able to make a surprise uh, a surprise inspection because they were the um, inspections were always compromised that is the Iraqis always knew they were coming even the ones that were supposed to be snap inspections so uh, anyone who thinks that this deal is going to stop Iran's nuclear program is willfully ignoring the history or I, I think a former head of uh, uh, defense intelligence said uh, willfully blind. Yes, uh, and of course, uh, willful blindness is the name of Andy McCarthy's uh, great book. Uh, you know, and, and speaking about the uh, sanctions, um, the, the, the U.S. Congress is going to have a lot to say about that, and the president has basically today warned uh, Congress that if they thwart this deal in any way, that the U.S. will be blamed. Um, and I wonder who he means blame. Who's going to blame the U.S.? Iran? 
Uh, certainly not Israel, not Saudi Arabia, not Jordan, not Egypt. I mean, uh, who's going to? Why should we care? Who blames us if this deal gets thwarted? Well, in fact, uh, sometimes it's in fact as a general rule, it's better to be blamed for doing the right thing than to be ignored or exonerated for doing the wrong thing. So if we are blamed by our allies who are participants in this agreement, uh, so be it. They understand, uh, I believe, our allies understand that this is a very weak agreement. And by the way, it isn't finished yet. Right. Between now and uh, June, uh, very important uh, uh, details will be settled, although no matter how they settle the details, it's still throwing the dice with respect to Iran's nuclear weapons program. This will not stop that program. Do you? We have less than a minute. Do you foresee eventually a response by Israel uh, with uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, backing of the Arab nations, whether they just turn their, uh, their blind eye and let it happen or participate uh, in military action against Iran? Uh, my, if, if you ask me uh, to look into a crystal ball, uh, the agreement will go forward because this administration is determined right. to do it. The Iranians love it. Uh, and at some point, they will be caught cheating. Right. And at that point, the Israelis will feel they have every right to strike. Gotcha. Richard, uh, have a great holiday, sir. Thank you very much for joining us. All the best. Thank you. Richard Pearl, ladies and gentlemen. Up next... Hotair.com columnist Ed Morrissey.